Hi, this is Kai from Kikai Craft. And for this particular video, I'm just gonna dive into my vintage pens. Now I've talked about my vintage pens in different videos, uh, but today we're just gonna have a look at what I have. So what I have decided to do is to house all my vintage pens in my Galen Leather four pen uh, zip, oh, slip and zip. A pouch and I got it in the undyed leather and so it's a very nice pouch for the pens it holds um, four pens very comfortably and uh, it also has a notebook that I got also from Galen leather in this pouch and this is where I've uh, held my uh, vintage pens now it's a four pen pouch which means my um, other old pen is not in the pouch but I have had a look at what vintage means and vintage means it should be 40 plus years old. And my Cross Solo Classic, as much as I love it, is almost vintage. It's a decade away from being a vintage pen, apparently, because it was um, released sometime in 1993. And so that means it's about 30 years old now. Um, but I usually have it here. However, I just got myself a new vintage pen and so I'm now trying to figure out how to work with it. I have an idea, uh, but I'll do that later. I'll talk about it later. So let's talk about what I do have in my Galen Leather uh, four pouch slip and zip. Okay, so first of all, if you want to have a look at the pouch, uh, on one side it has the Galen Leather company um, a name embossed on it. On the other side, it's quite plain. It's about a month old, so you'll see scuff marks and all of that and a little bit of patina when it came. It was much, much lighter than this. It The color was more of the uh, Caveco Macchiato, which is quite light, rather than this darker um, shade color, okay? Now it comes with a zipper, obviously, and uh, the zipper has a leather tab and it's just quite nice. It goes all the way um, on one edge and most of the other one. And when you open it up, you see my vintage pens and the notebook that I keep with it. I do keep um, one The Everyday Book with it, also from Galen Leather. So let's take it out. The slip and zip has a pen holder. Okay, and the pen holder is quite nice. It has this nice velvet on one side and on the other side, it has finished leather and it's quite good to put in your pens and slide it in. And it has room for a, a notebook. And I have this particular notebook from Galen Leather. It is their nine by 14 centimeter one and it's blank. It uses Tomoe River 52 GSM white paper and it comes in a box of three and for each box you get some writing guides um you have the lined ones and the graph ones and you have this nice little blotter leather thing as you can see i've already sort of uh, messed that up a little bit but that's what it's uh, there for um so what i use this notebook for is basically to write my pens when they arrive or when I first ink them up. So you can see I have a few, I've used this in a few of my videos. And then there's nothing else in it, uh, just to let you know, in case you want the information, the inside of the um, slip and zip has raw leather. It's not finished leather, it's not velvet. It feels quite uh, soft and smooth, but it's on when you um, sort of smooth it on one side, but it can also feel a little rough if you go against the grain. I don't know if it will become smoother with age. I'm not sure. I guess I'll find out. Um, stitching is good. Quality is good. Leather is nice and it smells really good. All right. It's very floppy. So nice. All right, so uh, basically what we're gonna do right now is I'm just gonna walk you through what I have in my vintage collection and my um, honorary vintage pen. And I'll just uh, talk about what it is that I have. Uh, from the youngest 
to, I suppose, the oldest in the collection. So the youngest one that I have is not really vintage yet. It's 30 years old. It's a cross solo classic in forest green. It has a screw cap, right? And it is in medium. Okay, so the nib is not gold, but it is gold plated. If I'm not mistaken, it's uh, gold plated with uh, 22 carat, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, it's still a very, very nice pen. I really like it. It has um, cross on the band of its cap. Right, I saw this still being sold new in um, some bookshops here. So yeah, so it's a relatively young pen. And then I have uh, the youngest in my technically vintage set, and that is my Mont Blanc. So this is the Mont Blanc Meisterstruck 144. Uh, Solitaire du Vermeil in Bordeaux. So it's quite a long name. Basically, what it says is that it is Mont Blanc. It's of the Meisterstruck collection. Uh, the 144. Now, we don't uh, have 144 anymore. They now released the 145, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it is a solitaire because it has some sort of like the pinstripe thing on one side and it has resin on the other. It's like a half thing. Um, some uh, call this the do, which means one part of it is in metal and the other part is in resin. It's Vermeil because this metal part is uh, silver inside. If I'm not mistaken, it is uh, in 925 silver and this very thin um, wash of gold over it uh, this one is 22 carat but it's just a layer so as you can see it already has like it's already losing some of the plating okay but it's still quite a good pen still quite good uh, condition this is if I'm not mistaken about 43 years old. I want to talk about this just a little bit. And so when I first got this, I was quite confused about how to date it. Um, it had all the features of a 144, and that would be um, the emblem on top, the Vermeer cap, the burgundy in precious resin, and uh, it had a really nice feed as expected. Um, but on the nib, by the way, the nib, right, is Dutone, and it is a 14 karat nib. Now, there was some conversation about this because I also read that 144s usually come with an 18 karat nib. So I went to a Mont Blanc boutique here in Jakarta, and I asked them a little bit about the pen, and I consulted with them. Uh, very informally about the pen and they said yes um, it is definitely correct because before it the um, the 144 had the 18 carat they did release it with the 14 carat nib and so they said they would date this pen to the 1980s very early 1980s and one of the first releases of the 144 so that made this pen extra special okay now it also says that it comes in medium so Mont Blancs usually have the size of the nib uh, on a sticker but I've been writing with it and it doesn't feel like a medium and interestingly enough it feels different when I write horizontally and when I write vertically and I'll show that um, to you in a bit because I just want to first introduce you to the pens um, this one I got from a uh, antique shop here in Jakarta. Very interesting find. Um, then we have the Pilot Ilabo. Now this is also known as the Pilot Falcon. Okay, it has a black resin body and cap with some gold trim. I really like the uh, cap bit, okay, because it has this braid on it, like a braid pattern, and then it says made in Japan and then some braid pattern and it says Ilabo 
and that's all it says. So, um, Ilabos are usually from uh, the Japan market. In the outside Japan, it's called a falcon. So this is the Ilaba one. And one more interesting bit about this pen. Don't know if you saw it when I turned it. Let me just scoot you up. It has a serial number. Now I've been looking for information about this. It's a wonderful serial number too. Um, and in a chat that I saw in Fountain Pen Network, if I'm not mistaken, the fact that this has a serial number shows that it's one of the first runs, if not the first run, because only the first runs had serial numbers. And so this was released in um, about 1970s, late 1970s. Um, some people date it at 1978. So that means this particular pen is 45 years old. So the Meister Stroke was 43 and this is 45. It has a um, okay, it has a soft, extra fine nib, and it is a 14 karat nib as well. Very interesting falcon beak looking nib on it. Okay, uh, some people call this some sort of like a flex, but I feel it's really just a soft that you can flex um, a little bit. Okay, all right, so that is the... Pilot Ilabo. Now, the next oldest one is the newest pen in my collection. This is a platinum pocket pen. All right, and I haven't really talked about this one. It doesn't have its own video yet because I recently got this like two days ago, maybe. So, as you can see, it's a white pen and it has gold trim. Okay, this is the clip. It's a pretty stiff clip, but it and gets the work done. There's a, some nice pattern on the clip. Okay, it has a white body now. When I consulted with the place that sold this to me, Panacea, that's a shop here in Indonesia, um, he said he thinks this is an aluminum body that has been painted on. Okay, and as you can see, it has a wonderful pattern. It's a, clo a clover design, four leaf clover design. Okay, and it is a slip cap. Okay, so you just basically pull it out. And you see this tiny, tiny nib right there. Okay, and let's scoot you in so you see it a bit more. Okay, you see the platinum logo on it. Okay, and you see 14K right on top of it. Can you see it? Yep. And it has some um, Japanese characters under it okay um since i haven't really talked about this i'm just going to show you that it is a cartridge pen so you just simply twist the bottom part of the barrel off and there you'll see the um, cartridge so this is currently inked with a blue color a blue ink all right um it also has to some degree some flex in it uh, this was released sometime in the uh, 1970s um, so that would make this about 53 years old so if you notice uh, one common theme that I've noticed all my vintage pens have is that um, they have 14 karat gold nibs and my last one is the oldest also happens to be Quite a favorite vintage pen of mine. It is the Pelican 140 in green stripe. I love this pen. It's so cool. Okay, it has a twist cap. Oh yeah, it uh, has gold trim, has the Pelican on its finial, bottom finial has none of that. Um, and it's a screw cap, so you have to screw it off. Um, it doesn't really have the size of the nib on the nib, right? But uh, this one is a an extra fine, I was told by the person who sold this to me. This has a very nice flex to it. All right, so these are my four uh, vintage pens. Really nice place to hold the pens. Um, the Pelican, the oldest one is about 68 years old. It was released in 19, 
uh, 55 and so that is quite uh, of some age. So these are the four vintage ones, quite technically vintage ones because they're 40 plus years old and I have my little younger one, my 30 year old uh, pen. And these four are all in my Galen Leather 4 pen slip and zip. Okay, that's how I've set it up. And if you see here, I just want to show you. Okay, it's just writing samples. So this is my Mont Blanc 144. It is quite thick. Let me just go ahead. It's a slip cap, right? Let me just go ahead and show you. Um, if you haven't seen, excuse me, from my other um, video, right, how it looks. So if I write it this way, this is like no pressure at all. It's currently ink with writer's blood. This is no pressure. Okay, and sideways. See? Quite. A, I don't know, is this a bold? Not a medium? it's quite interesting okay so it's definitely very different again no pressure some slight railroading there and vertical no pressure okay let me try with some pressure oh it's quite thick some pressure okay and of course if I write with it let's just do the regular S's Okay, it does release quite a bit of ink, also because I'm using writer's blood. Okay, it's a very interesting pen. It has confused me, continues to confuse me. Okay, I don't know, is it like a Franken pen? I'm not sure. Okay, but it seems quite okay. And the uh, boutique that I showed it to uh, seemed quite um, satisfied. With it. By the way, the boutique I went to is a real Mont Blanc boutique. It is actually in um, in Jakarta. All right, and so this is how that one writes. Let's see if I can find you more writing samples of the other pens. Oh yes, this one is the Pelican. Okay, let me see if I can show you a sample of that. Yep, it's the Pelican 140. It is inked with Peter Moss. This one behaves quite well. Um, oh, it's a screw cap. I sometimes forget. Again, no pressure. Looks quite good. Same width and then with pressure, quite thick. I love this pen. I really do. The line variation is just wow. Okay. Really good pen. Oops, sorry about that. And then I have my platinum pocket it is in extra extra fine it's really really thin oops wrong way slip just got it so it's still a bit uh, new to my hand um so no pressure very fine and good stroke okay with some pressure okay it does lay quite a bit Okay, I, I also enjoy this uh, pen when it comes to line variation. And finally, of course, the Pilot Elabo, which should be somewhere here. Let's just put a bit of blotter paper there. Okay, again, um, I like the fact, it's a slip cap by the way. Okay, again, no pressure. No pressure, very nice, some pressure. Quite a bit of variation here as well. Okay. All right. And just for fun, let me share with you my Cross Solo Classic because I do love this pen from the 1993. Uh, it's a screw cap. All right. And so just going to write with it because just to let you know, I use this pen a lot okay it's quite nice it is in medium and it is in forest green 
and this one very consistent all right and let's try with some pressure not a lot of line variation to it uh, maybe a tiny bit but not really as much as the other ones okay so those are my vintage pens as of now all are in my um, Galen leather slip and zip wonderful bag um, wonderful pouch to have um, I like how it houses my writing sample books for my pens and my vintage pens um, so I am looking forward to maybe getting one or two more vintage pens in a very near future and I'll be sharing them with you this is Kai from Kikai Craft. I hope you had fun uh, with today's video and my explorations of vintage pens. If you have other vintage flex pens that you think would be interesting to have, do leave a uh, comment below with the name of the pen and I would like to have a little look at it. Okay, I'll see you in my next video. Have a great day or a restful evening. This is Kai. Bye everyone.